Hey, Hi, everybody. Welcome. We'll get started in just a minute. Great, we'll just, uh, there's still some people coming into the the, the meeting. We'll just wait one more minute. Hi, everybody. Um, it is so nice to see so many of you. And thank you so much to everybody for taking the time to join us tonight. We are really so excited to be having this town hall. I will say the word excited many times in the next minute. But really, that's how we feel. It has been a journey, a tally for all of us to get to this moment. And we could not have done it without the incredible support of our entire Ramat community. Our families, our honey theme, our Devit, the support of our board, our executive, and of course our year-round professional staff team. We have worked so hard to get to this moment, or the moments are coming soon when we are up in Ederson together. And really tonight we're excited to spend time talking to all of you about the fact that camp is on. Camp is going to run this summer, and we are so excited to be able to do this all together with all of you. There's a lot of information that we've shared. There's a lot of information that we're gonna to share tonight and there's a lot more to come. So we ask that you work with us and stay with us. Any Shayla, any questions you have, you can feel free to chat me and I'll be directing them at the end of the presentation. And anything that we don't get to tonight, we'll of course be covering in the days and weeks to come. We are here to support you and your honey team, your campers, our Devit on this incredible journey that we're about to embark on together as a Ramat Canada community. So Tadara Ba, thank you so much for being with us tonight and for staying with Camper Man Canada. And with that, I'll pass it to our wonderful director, uh, Rabbi Jordan Ben Dadapel, to continue on with the important information. Great. Thank you so much, Aviva. Um, just to echo what Aviva said, uh, it was not a foregone conclusion that we'd be able to have a town hall like tonight in which we're able to say uh, that we're opening camp soon, that um, you know we're able to move forward. Um, so we're just so thrilled. Um, tonight is an opportunity um, to kind of give a bit more explanation about a number of the things we sent out last week. Um, there shouldn't be any, you know, um, big pieces of new information tonight, but rather um, refinements and clarifications. Um, we will give you more information, uh, you know, like a bit more about testing, etc. But um, we'll continue communicating because the way that all of this has unfolded in Ontario has been surprising. And um, <laughs> we still await final uh, guidance from the Ministry of Health. And there are a number of other important pieces about our summer that are still uh, coming together. 
Um, every day we're solving many, many uh, problems and issues as we discover new ones. Running camp in this kind of environment is, is just totally new for us. Um, so we really tonight, um, you know, in addition to giving you some information, we also just wanted to share a little bit more about how we are orienting ourselves towards the summer. And, um, you know, importantly, as you see on the screen in front of you, um, to emphasize a key point, which is that we are in this together. Um, it's not a question of, you know, would you be in this with us? That is not what we're saying. We're affirming that we are in this together already. Um, there is this classic statement that I think many of us are familiar with from the Talmud, Shekol Yisrael Aravim Zebazeh. And uh, this word Aravim, which here is translated as responsible, which is a good translation for it, the conventional translation for it. But that root, Ayin Resh Bet, means to be mixed up. Right, so you may be uh, familiar with Mi'orav uh, Yerushalmi, a dish that you could get in Israel with all kinds of different things mixed up and cooked together. So one way we can understand this, which is very much the case in our situation right now, is to say we're all kind of chopped up and mixed together in this. And it's not a question of um, would you please be responsible uh, for one another, but rather we are already mixed up with one another. We are responsible for one another. And that is a kind of primary um, orientation of a partnership that we really just want to invite you into very strongly because um, the stakes are high. Um, as we expressed last Friday in our communication, uh, the current guidelines from the Ministry of Health say that if, if there's a single positive COVID case, then that whole cohort needs to go home. Uh, that rule might change, but we certainly have to operate as if that will be the rule. And um, we are confident that we can manage it. But the key way that we're going to manage it is by trying to keep COVID from entering camp at all. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the key thing that we all have such a strong interest in. Nobody wants any kid to have to miss any part of the summer um, because they have COVID or you know, what we can all imagine will be even worse is if your child doesn't have COVID, but somebody uh, who they may have never met before the summer began um, came in with COVID, um, and then that whole cohort has to go home. So, um, and to be very clear, um, you know, we are going to be very, very intentional about uh, not shaming or stigmatizing. We know that somebody could be the most careful person around COVID, and still come in um, asymptomatic COVID positive. So um, we just, you know, we want everybody's partnership, but again, we're not um, looking to, uh, uh, we're sensitive to not create a dynamic in camp in which um, people with COVID are stigmatized. Um, I wanna underline another piece, which is that, and I think it'll be clear as we dig into this some more, uh, it's very complicated to run camp in this kind of environment. We've been planning for this for 15 months. I mean, even before last summer, uh, well before last summer, we had been working on plans to run camp in a COVID environment. Uh, we didn't know till uh, the middle of May last year that we weren't running. Um, so, you know, it was all that, a lot of learning from what happened uh, with camps that did run uh, successfully and unsuccessfully in the US last summer. And uh, it's been a really intense process of, of uh, you know, engaging in all the different kinds of learning um, in partnership with all of our different partners, especially with the National Roma Commission um, and uh, um, the Ontario Council of Jewish Camps, um, the Ontario Camps Association. I'm especially grateful to the amazing leadership of the uh, chair of our COVID medical committee, of our medical committee, Dr. Tanya Wyman, who will be, uh, who's joining us tonight and will we'll speak later, um, who's led just such a professional, amazing effort um, with the support of uh, our, our nursing staff and the other doctors who uh, work at camp and are part of our, our camp community. We feel really confident that we can run safely this summer. We really do. Um, I feel um, uh, like camp will be the safest place 
for any of our kids to be this summer. Um, and uh, again, in order to do that, um, we're really all in it together. It's a lot of work, but the payoff, the payoff is massive. And the payoff is that our kids get to be at camp. And uh, certainly, I mean, I can't tell you how many times over the past 15 plus months, I've uh, imagined looking out at camp and you know, hearing amazing uh, Hebrew music and hearing kids laughing and feeling the sunshine coming down and seeing kids just playing and being normal. And just, I'm filled with, uh, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with emotion. We all know our kids need this. They need to get away from their screens. They need to be in real life situations with other people, um, active, uh, it, you know, vibrant living like we uh, are able to offer at camp. Camp will be different this summer. There is no question about it. Um, you know, uh, we will not, I don't, we will, we should not, none of us should expect to have a uh, Chadar Ochel packed with people, pushed together, uh, jumping and um, singing. Um, however, there is an incredible amount of uh, sort of normal camp and the goodness of camp that will be there. And I actually believe that this summer is gonna be really a summer for the ages. I don't think that anybody who goes through camp this summer will not be profoundly impacted by it. Um, and, uh, and that's true for certainly for our campers and also for our staff. So we know this is a lot that we're asking from people. We have, are asking a lot from ourselves to pull this together, uh, but we really uh, believe so deeply the payoff is worth it um, in spades. So um, we're, we're just really grateful for your partnership. Um, okay. Next slide. So in broad strokes, uh, we can think about our plan for operating the summer as having these three different phases. There's the pre-camp phase, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, and, and that's gonna be the key time in which uh, we're really relying on our, our parents to support us in um, minimizing the chance that any COVID is coming into camp. And uh, there's a lot that you can do to help us with that. Um, then the next phase is entering into camp and Zman Aleph, which means the, the first period, which is the initial period of camp, the first 14 days in which we're gonna have uh, the most restrictive kind of living, uh, living by cohorts, um, operating by cohort, cohorts. We'll get to that a bit more um, in a minute, in a little bit, what, what exactly that will look like. Um, and then after that, there's a, a third phase, which we're calling Zman Bet, and even we could think of Zman Gimel, et cetera. Um, we're still working with our medical committee and again, waiting final guidance from the province, um, but we're still feeling out exactly what it will look like to move from Zman Aleph into the rest of the summer. We really cannot commit tonight to exactly what that will look like. Uh, you know, we can't say, you know, we'll look at our watches at 12 p.m. at the end of Zman Aleph, uh, you know, masks off and everybody can just embrace. Uh, we should not expect that. Um, it may be more gradual. Uh, it will be significant. And, you know, the goal will be to open camp up as much as possible, to minimize uh, masking, to minimize um, all the things that we're doing in order to, um, you know, practice um, good uh, um, safe practices in you know preventing a COVID outbreak. We're really going to be trying to minimize those things, but all along we're going to be weighing it with uh, you know looking for the right balance with the significant risk that we will be um, you know looking out for. Um, if we loosen things too quickly, um, you know what what might be the consequences of that. Um, so we're really going to be taking a cautious approach, but. 100% we will want camp to be as open as possible for as much of the summer as possible. And uh, thankfully we're gonna have um, an enhanced uh, medical staff on site this summer, more nurses, uh, amazing doctors, um, and we're gonna be monitoring uh, everybody's health um, closely and really trying to stay on top of everything. Um, okay. So I'm gonna pass it to Aviva who will jump into kind of 
a, a couple of the initial important pieces of our pre-camp phase? So some great questions about transportation for the summer. This summer, everybody is going to be brought up to camp uh, by their families so that we can make sure that we've really done everything we can to keep our cohort safe. So there will be a baggage drop off three days before camp. And at that baggage drop off, we'll be collecting medication. There will be a medical professional on site as we collect your medication. There will be staff there to help collect your bags and we'll be doing testing. Jordan's gonna get a little bit more into what the testing is gonna look like. All of this information is gonna go in our next big email, which is gonna come in a couple of weeks. You don't need to write anything down or remember, just know that we will be collecting bags and medication and doing testing all in one shot three days before camp on Sunday, uh, July the 4th. And then there will be a period then on the day of, on July the 7th, there will be two different possibilities. You will be able to do a pre-camp rapid test, either in Toronto, if you're in the GTA area or in and around there. And if you're already up north, there will be the possibility to do a rapid test up north. Then we're going to ask everybody, there will be a lovely schedule created for everybody. You'll get it in due time of when to do that test and when you'll be able to drop your children off at the gate of camp. You won't be able to enter camp. We will be so excited to greet your children. Our seven have been waiting and we'll have been waiting for this moment for some time. So it'll be all scheduled, the rapid test in either Toronto or up north, and then a drop of your children off at the gate um, of camp. At the end of each session, there will be busing home provided. So there will be lots of busing home provided. And if you are gonna be interested in picking your child up without entering camp, at the gates of camp, there will be the possibility uh, to do so as well. And again, all of these procedures we're currently working on, but it's all done to make sure that we're going to be keeping you and your children safe. Just two dates, the Sunday and the Wednesday are those dates that you need to remember. And again, we'll be providing passing home at the end of the summer for everybody. So I'll pass it back to Jordan, who's going to speak a little bit more about what our testing uh, process is going to look like as far as we have now. Great. Okay. So, um, and again, uh, this is going to be um, written out, you know, very clearly and sent to you ahead of time with all of the um, relevant information. Um, so, number one, um, and this is really um, one way that you can both take responsibility for keeping uh, everybody's kids safe um, and uh, at camp. Um, but even if you're just thinking about your kid. This is a key thing. It's not um, a mandatory test, but we highly recommend that between 11 and 14 days before camp begins, so that's June 23rd through 25th, um, campers go and get a PCR test. You'll be able to do that at uh, pharmacies, um, and we'll be providing you all the information to find that um, and uh, at no um, out-of-pocket cost. So um, you'll be able to get that, that'll be a test and that will be an NP swab. So a kind of a back of the nose um, uh, jab um, for that test. And let me just say before I go any further, we have worked really hard uh, to minimize the number of nasal swab tests that we have to do. And we're really grateful to Sick Kids Hospital who has a, an amazing service for uh, camps that it's making available, which is saliva PCR testing. So really um, has the, um, the quality of tests that we need, but uh, you know, instead of getting the really uncomfortable um, NP swab, it's just spitting in a tube. So we've maximized um, our saliva testing uh, which, by the way, parenthetically, it was is a sentence I never thought I would ever say when I was studying to be a rabbi, but we are maximizing our saliva testing. And because um, uh, we know that just is going to make everybody, it's going to be a lot easier. The only other time when for sure there will be an NP swab, which will be on the day of camp. So uh, at, at the entrance, you know, when you're on the day of drop off. So the two times when we know that will um, be there, parents will be around. Um, there may be other times, but um, we're really trying to, um, you know, maximize the use of the saliva testing, which is just much more pleasant for everybody. So again, with this, um, with number one, 
the highly recommended test. The um, key part of it is that if you get tested during that time period, you will know before camp if your child is COVID positive or negative. Uh, so that when that child comes to uh, the entrance test, um, uh, you have a much greater assurance that your child will be able to enter camp on opening day. And again, if you have that test, uh, the highly recommended early test, that will also give you an indication soon enough, quickly enough, if your child is COVID positive, for that child to um, uh, get better and uh, come into camp. Uh, so we'll be sending out more information about that, but really just want to emphasize that that test. It's a, it's a really powerful tool uh, for each family and for all of camp to try to keep COVID out of camp. Um, we are, so number two, we're asking all campers to isolate at home as best as possible. We had here, um, not including school, um, the announcement from the provincial government today that schools are not going back makes this easier. Although all of us parents, I think are sad, our kids are not going back in person school. It does help um, with uh, um, reducing risk probably in um, campers coming to camp healthy. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, coming to camp uh, sick. So, um, but still we're asking that for the 14 days before camp begins on July 7th. So that means starting June 23rd that um, you really limit um, any uh, social gatherings that you or your household or especially your camper may be part of. Even outdoor gatherings, um, there is a risk of a COVID transmission in those kinds of situations. And we just ask you to weigh you know, what is um, most important right now. We know that this is really hard and we get it. And um, we, what, we, what I really wanna emphasize is that um, we ask people to, you know, maybe you can meet with those people, uh, but maybe you're really distanced and you're masked and you're outside. So um, we really wanna encourage you to use those good um, COVID health um, uh, uh, practices, uh, those NPIs as they're called, non-pharmaceutical interventions that are gonna be really at the centerpiece of keeping camp healthy, especially during Zaman Aleph of masking, distancing, and being outside as much as possible. And those are uh, principles that, you know, we really ask that you adhere to um, in the 14 days before camp. It's the best thing that you can do to make sure that your child doesn't have to come home uh, from camp. So uh, number three, mandatory PCR test before the July 7th opening. So there'll be, um, as Aviva said, on um, July Sunday, July 4th, um, there'll be a location, we'll let you know all about it well in advance. Um, and um, that'll be saliva testing, it'll be at the same time as luggage drop off and med drop off. Um, and we'll be able to collect it then, get it processed with enough time to know if there's a positive test before um, it's time to actually come up to camp. So then uh, step four, mandatory day of the day of camp starting drop off testing um we will have again oh sorry um we will have as aviva said um uh um, locations both in the toronto area and um near camp maybe it will be at camp um for these um rapid tests and that'll give us another um gauge on um people, you know, where people are at coming into camp. As soon as campers come into camp, they'll be uh, placed into cohorts. And uh, those cohorts will be by cabin and um, will be for the first 14 days of camp. Again, Zaman Aleph. When, you're, when campers are within their cabin cohorts during Zaman Aleph, they will not need to be masked and they will not need to practice social distancing. During Zaman Aleph, when they're outside of their um, cohort, every camper will need to you know, uh, be masked and practice distancing. And during Zaman Aleph, we're really going to try to keep folks um, you know, uh, separate, especially at the beginning of that time. Um, but um, you know, people will still be able to see each other. It's not going to be like um, you know, that people are going to feel like the only people in camp are the people in their cabin. So um, during Zaman Aleph, 
there will be um, a, a rich array of programs, activities, activity areas will be open. Um, they may have modified activities uh, to comply with the COVID regulations during Zman Aleph, but um, campers will not just be in their cabins. It'll be active and uh, you know, a wonderful experience. And as part of that Zman Aleph cohorted experience, we're gonna have, um, we're really gonna maximize meal times outside and really maximize everything outside. We'll have plenty of rainy day plans, um, but um, you know, primarily we're gonna have um, meals and other things outside. Um, and then after Zman Aleph, um, we're gonna continue to do daily screenings, you know, in which uh, staff members um, not taking temperature every day, but just, you know, really with intention and care, um, making sure, you know, that we can uh, catch something quickly. Um, so just checking in on campers well-being, just like, you know, all of us parents are doing um, in, or what we used to do when our kids were going to school and we'd fill out the um, form online, um, we'll be doing those kinds of assessments. Um, and there will be some other testing done um, according to the recommendations of our medical committee. Um, okay. Um, so if somebody uh, tests positive for COVID, um, um, first of all, we're gonna make sure that, um, that we'll verify it um, if the test was not done with a PCR test, which is the gold standard, it, it'll be verified with the PCR test. Um, so we're looking to um, avoid false positives. Um, but um, according to the Ministry of Health guidelines, as we mentioned, everybody who tests positive and the people in their cohorts have to go home. Um, as we uh, put in the communication last week, um, time in isolation or quarantine at home um, will act as a credit towards a 14-day extension beyond the scheduled end date for your camper if they're not registered for the whole summer. If they are registered for the whole summer, that credit can be transferred to a sibling to extend their stay. And uh, if neither option is, is possible, credit may be applied towards summer 2022 um, at an amount that we'll figure out at the conclusion of summer 2021. And the reason we're not defining that here is because um, uh, it really depends on how it all go, on what happens. Um, if we have to um, send one cohort home, it's very different than if we have to send uh, 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 numerous cohorts home. We are planning on not needing to send anybody home. So um, that being said, um, we just uh, will wanted to um, return to that after the summer to see how everything goes. Okay, sorry. Um, also, um, we have updated our refund policy. Um, all payments are due in full by June 6th. This was extended from May 31st, which was extended from uh, originally in a typical year, it'd be in February, um, and then it was moved to April. Uh, and here we are June 6th. Um, please take your time before June 6th, uh, this Sunday, to um, make sure that you can adhere to this, that this um, makes sense for you. Um, if for any reason you uh, decide to um, uh, withdraw your camper, you'll receive a full refund before June 6th. As of June 7th, in the event that camp is canceled, delayed, or closed, Camper Mon Canada will do everything possible to mitigate costs and losses. However, with many fixed costs already incurred, there will be an impact on the amount of refunds that may be provided by camp. So this is the policy that our, our uh, board of directors um, approved. It's one that I, I, I think is uh, really smart for, for everybody involved. And it really goes back to the first principle that we started with. We're in this together. Um, last summer had a massive impact on uh, camp's um, uh, financial stability. We were lucky enough to have a significant insurance policy that helped us get through it all. In addition to incredible generosity um, from our community um, and, and our, our friends at Federation, et cetera. Um, many of those supports are not in place in the same way this summer. And in order for us to be able to run the summer, and as you can imagine, it costs a lot of money to run camp year round. 
And we have had to invest significant amounts of money in the past uh, month, six weeks, in order to open camp this summer. Um, we're not able to take on that risk uh, our, ourselves. So we're, uh, this policy is an expression of affirming that we're all in this together. Everybody wants their kids to have camp. We need everybody to shoulder some of that, um, that risk. So we hope that this is uh, you know, amenable to you. We really worked hard to um, craft a policy that um, protected camp and protects our families. And again, um, we really believe we are gonna open on July 7th and we are gonna run the full summer. Um, we feel confident in that um, and we think it's well worth um, the investment and uh, taking the risk. So uh, we're really grateful for your partnership with that. Um, I'm happy to um, speak with folks if you want to get it, uh, you know, dig down into it some more. Um, uh, also, a reminder: um, in order to cover testing costs and other uh, many uh, many adaptations, we've had to um, make to camp for the summer to run um, in a way that's compliant with regulations and safe. Um, we uh, need to charge a 350 plus HST um, COVID surcharge. Um, We'll be making an announcement soon uh, to all those who are receiving uh, scholarship funds about how this will work with that. But um, stay tuned, that'll be coming really soon. And also, uh, there is a COVID waiver. Um, COVID waivers must be signed for all campers, and you can find that in your Camp and Touch portal uh, to sign uh, that waiver. Um, almost done. Uh, just to say, um, we are so excited that we'll be able to have um, uh, programs for each ADA, each age unit. Um, again, we'll be sending this out some more, but um, you see it there on the screen on Tuesday and Wednesday, June 8th and 9th. Um, we'll be convening with uh, all the campers in the ADA and also with the Roche ADA for that ADA, the, the unit head. So that should be lovely and just an opportunity for campers to see each other, see the Roche Da, and start to feel some of that amazing camp uh, energy. So wanted to end with um, a quote that I, I put in a, um, I actually shared at our last town hall back in February, it feels like ages ago. And at that time, again, it was not a foregone conclusion that we would be able to run camp. Um, that wasn't clear even as a few weeks ago. So, um, Wanted to um, um, conclude with this because I, to me, it, it's something that's a kind of a guiding light for me. Um, and uh, it, it, this version of this statement comes from Ms. Sila Ishari, written by uh, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato in the 18th century. He says, Techilato hishtadlut besofo matana. Uh, it, it's beginning, and he's not talking about camp, but he's, he's talking about holiness. But the, the statement applies here. It's beginning is effort and its end is a gift, is a matana. So um, there's a lot that goes into running camp safely in a normal summer. And this is even beyond that um, in, a, in significant ways. Um, we're asking a lot from our families. Um, we're pushing ourselves to run a camp in a way that is, um, it's just much more complex, but um, it's all for a purpose. And the purpose is to get through Zaman Aleph and then to start to open up camp more and more and to give our children the gift of, of, of camp. It's what they all need. And we all just feel like, you know, this is, um, you know, medicine for our souls as human beings. Um, so we really deeply are, believe this gift is worth it. And um, we're so grateful to all of you for your partnership and your support in helping us get there. I'm now going to pass it on to Dr. Tanya Wyman. Thanks so much. Um, I just wanted to say that you know throughout the last year and a half, the professional staff have worked around the clock to really make the summer incredible. I have full confidence that we can do it safely. I know that you know even six months ago when we the numbers were so much higher, I felt that we could run camp safely. So with the progression of all the vaccines, the numbers becoming down so much lower, I feel so comfortable 
um, with the plan that we have in place to kind of let everything go forward. Um, and you guys are just going to be such a big help to make this happen. So the, the pre-camp um, you know, limiting risk of, of catching COVID, the testing to make sure that everyone's okay. The big reason why we recommend the one two weeks before is really because if your kid or someone in the household has asymptomatic COVID, you'll have the time to quarantine and they can come up to camp um, safely and everybody else in the camp, in the, in the house too. So if one sibling has it, they have to isolate for 10 days, but then the whole family has to isolate for 14 days. So that's just really how that benefits. Uh, you um, so that if in case for any reason there was a risk then you know that you're okay for that um, just wanted to add that in the first couple of weeks in zaman aleph there'll be about three saliva testings that we'll be having um, four to five days apart from each other um, and that will be well organized and that's the mass screening uh, to make sure that we haven't missed anything um, and then obviously if anybody has symptoms of covid we'll be testing them appropriately and isolating them the marp has been We've uh, completely changed in the sense that we'll be doing outdoor tents for anyone with symptoms. We'll be um, keeping different sections of the MARP for some people who have infectious symptoms versus other people who just have sore knees or rashes that need to be looked at. Um, the best thing you can do for us is really, um, if you haven't finished the camper medical forms or if you want to go back into it, First of all, let us know of any symptoms that your kids have regularly that might be COVID-like. If someone has migraines or has allergies or gets stomach aches regularly, the more you can tell us, then if they come with headaches and say, oh, I get this, you know, usually twice a week anyway, it's a bit less concern. We're still gonna assess them and see whether they need to be further tested. But the more we know, um, then it just helps uh, for us to manage them all summer. And in, the other thing is just with our medications, recommending everyone even if there's one pill to do blister packs it will just expedite things we're trying to keep everybody separate initially to really minimize the risk uh it's safe uh it's best so that we can see if any medications are missed uh it's really just uh, the, the best protocols at this point um and then the other thing is if your campers were lucky enough to have received the vaccine um so everyone 12 and up is eligible at this point um please go get it if you haven't if you're eligible uh, and please record that so if we know you've gotten the vaccine, especially two doses, it really also helps us throughout the summer to manage things. And I just wanna thank professional staff for all their hard work and they're really involved with every little aspect of everything and, and know camp so well and know everything about how it should be run safely. So I completely trust my kids and uh, all of yours to be there this summer. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Tanya and Jordan and our entire team. And we thank all of you so much for being here with us tonight. Throughout the course of the presentation, I've been fielding uh, many, many questions. And I think I've been able to address people's individual uh, questions throughout the chat. And I'll just keep going through for another minute or two and answering your questions over the chat. But of course, if you have any questions or concerns or quandaries, please be in touch with any of us over email anytime we're doing our best. Um, uh, to be responding as quickly as possible, to be answering the phone as quickly as possible, um, and just know that we are so committed to making this a really incredible, amazing, exciting, wonderful kite summer for all of our funny team and Devitt, who we are so excited to welcome uh, to camp very, very soon. So like I said, if you have any other questions, you can just chat them to us and we'll stay on for a few more minutes to answer them. And we're just really grateful to all of you for staying on this talik on this journey with us. And we can't wait to celebrate summer very soon with all of you. Thank you so, so much. And we hope that you have a great evening. Laila Tov to Jaraba. And again, we'll just stay on and we have a few questions in my chat. So we'll stay on and answer those quickly. Um, so just give me a minute. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>